Obama administration was engaged in a second round of fighting over settlements this past spring, when the Netanyahu government embarrassed Vice President Biden during his visit to Israel by announcing plans to build 1,600 new housing units in East Jerusalem. While that crisis was important because it clearly revealed that Israel's brutal policies towards the Palestinians are seriously damaging American interests in the Middle East, Netanyahu rejected Obama's request to stop building settlements in East Jerusalem. As far as we are concerned, he said on March 21st, building in Jerusalem is like building in Tel Aviv. Our policy on Jerusalem is like the policy in the past 42 years. One day later at the annual APAC policy conference in Washington, D.C., he said, quote, the Jewish people were building Jerusalem 3,000 years ago, and the Jewish people are building Jerusalem today. Jerusalem is not a settlement, it is our capital. Meanwhile, back in the United States, APAC got 333 congressmen and 76 senators to sign letters to Secretary of State Clinton reaffirming their unyielding support for Israel and urging the administration to keep future disagreements behind closed doors. In short, President Obama is no match for the lobby. The best he can hope for is to continue the never-ending peace process, which he was actually able to restart in early September. But even there, he has had little success as the talks came to an end later that month when Israel decided to end its 10-month partial freeze of settlement building in the West Bank. Of course, Obama has pleaded with Netanyahu to continue the limited freeze, but the Israeli Prime Minister has rejected his request. But whether the talks continue or not matters little because they are a charade anyway. The two sides engage in endless talks while Israel continues to colonize Palestinian lands. Henry Siegman got it right when he called these fruitless talks, quote, the greater Middle East peace process scam, end of quote. There are two other reasons why there's not going to be a two-state solution. The Palestinians are badly divided among themselves and not in a good position to make a deal with Israel and then stick to it. That problem is fixable with time and help from Israel and the United States. But time has run out, and neither Jerusalem nor Washington is likely to provide a helping hand. Then there are the Christian Zionists, who are a powerful political force in the United States, as most of you know especially on Capitol Hill. <clears throat> they are adamantly opposed to a two-state solution because they want Israel to control every square millimeter of Palestine, a situation they believe heralds the second coming of Christ. What this all means is that there's going to be a greater Israel between the Jordan and the Mediterranean. In fact, I would argue that it already exists. But who will live there and what kind of political system will it have? It's not going to be a democratic binational state, at least in the near future. An overwhelming majority of Israeli Jews have no interest in living in a country that would be dominated by the Palestinians. And that includes young Israeli Jews, many of whom hold clearly racist views towards Palestinians. Furthermore, few of Israel's supporters in the United States are interested in this outcome, at least at this point in time. Most Palestinians, of course, would accept a democratic binational state without hesitation if it could be achieved quickly. But that's not going to happen. Although, as I will argue shortly, it is likely to come to pass down the road. Then there's ethnic cleansing, which would certainly mean that greater Israel would have a Jewish majority. But that murderous strategy seems unlikely because it would do enormous damage to Israel's moral fabric 
its relationship with Jews in the diaspora, and to its international standing. Israel and its supporters would be treated harshly by history, and it would poison relations with Israel's neighbors for years to come. No genuine friend of Israel could support this policy. It would be ob obviously be a crime against humanity. It also seems unlikely because most of the 5.5 million Palestinians living between the Jordan and the Mediterranean would put up fierce resistance if Israel tried to expel them from their homes. Nevertheless, there's reason to worry that Israel might adopt this solution as the demographic balance shifts against it and Israelis fear for the survival of the Jewish state. Given the right circumstances, say a war involving Israel that is accompanied by serious Palestinian unrest, Israeli leaders might conclude that they can expel massive numbers of Palestinians from greater Israel and depend on the lobby to protect them from international criticism and especially from sanctions. We should not underestimate Israel's willingness to employ such a horrific strategy if the opportunity presents itself. Remember what happened in 1948 and again in 1967. Furthermore, it is apparent from public opinion surveys and everyday discourse that many Israelis hold racist views of Palestinians and the Gaza massacre makes it clear that they have few qualms about killing Palestinians. It's difficult to disagree with Jimmy Carter's comment earlier this year that the citizens of Palestine are treated more like animals than human beings. A century of conflict and four decades of occupation will do that to a people. Still, I do not believe Israel will resort to this horrible course of action. The most likely outcome in the absence of a two-state solution is that Greater Israel will become a full-fledged apartheid state. As anyone who has spent time in the occupied territories knows, it is already an incipient apartheid state with separate laws, separate roads, and separate housing for Israelis and Palestinians who are essentially confined to impoverished enclaves that they can leave and enter only with great difficulty. Israelis and their supporters invariably bristle at the comparison to white rule in South Africa, but that is their future if they create a greater Israel while denying full political rights to an Arab population that will soon outnumber the Jewish population in the entirety of the land. Indeed, two former Israeli prime ministers have made this point. I want you to listen very carefully here because it is immensely important that you understand that this is former Prime Minister Ehud Olmert speaking, not John Mearsheimer. Former Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, who of course was Netanyahu's predecessor, said in late 2007 that if the two-state solution collapses, Israel will face a South African-style struggle. He went so far as to argue, as soon as that happens, the state of Israel is finished. So this is former Prime Minister Olmert saying, if you do not get a two-state solution, and I think it's quite clear you're not going to get a two-state solution, you're going to end up in a South Africa-like situation. That's what he said. And then he said, that's going to be the end of Israel. And this, of course, is the argument that I'm going to make. So I want you to understand, especially you start supporters of Israel in the crowd, that Ehud Olmert is telling you, no two-state solution, an apartheid state, and an apartheid state is unsustainable over the long term. Former Prime Minister Ehud Barak who is now Israel's defense minister, as I said before, said early in February of this year that, quote, as long as in this territory west of the Jordan River there is only one political entity called Israel, it is going to be either non-Jewish 
or non-democratic. If this block of millions of Palestinians cannot vote, that will be an apartheid state. That is Ehud Barak, in addition to Ehud Olmert, and I could go back to Ab and Eben, and I could point to many other Israelis who are telling you that if you don't get a two-state solution, you end up in a South Africa-like situation, or you end up in an apartheid situation. Of course, other Israelis, as well as Jimmy Carter and Bishop Desmond Tutu, have warned that if Israel does not pull out of the occupied territories, it will become an apartheid state. But if I am right, the occupation is not going to end, and there will not be a two-state solution. That means Israel will complete its transformation into a full-blown apartheid state over the next day, decade. In the long run, however, Israel will not be able to maintain itself as an apartheid state. Like racist South Africa, it will eventually evolve into a democratic, binational state whose politics will be dominated by the more numerous Palestinians. Of course, this means that Israel faces a bleak future as a Jewish state. Let me explain why. For starters, the discrimination and repression that is the essence of apartheid will be increasingly visible to people all around the world. Israel and its supporters have been able to do a good job of keeping the mainstream media in the United States from telling the truth about what Israel is doing to the Palestinians in the occupied territories. But the internet is a game changer not only makes it easy for the opponents of apartheid to get the real story out to the world, 